today I will show you the post-production process from start to finish using Adobe Lightroom software. Lightroom is not a popular choice when it comes to visualizations. We use it a lot for editing our photos, but recently we started to use it more and more to edit our renders. Let's jump into the application. This image, as well as the other examples in this tutorial, come from my online courses. If you want to learn all about architectural visualizations in 3ds Max, check them out. Here we can select the folder where our images are located. And here we can see all the images that are in this folder. I will close this panel so we can have more space for the image we are working on. On the right-hand side, we have different panels with tools we will be using. First, the Edit panel, then Crop panel, Healing panel and Masking panel. We'll start with the Edit panel. Here we have a few different rollouts. In this tutorial, we'll use the light, color and effects rollout. We cannot open the EXR file in Lightroom, so we have to save the file as a 32-bit TIFF file. If you already saved your image as EXR, you can open it in Photoshop and save it as TIFF. Back to the Lightroom. In the light panel, we can control things like exposure and contrast, but the really nice feature is the ability to control highlights and shadows separately. It gives us a lot of control. Look at this example. Here we have too many reflections on the floor, making the tiles too bright. Here in Lightroom, we can easily push the highlights down, which instantly solves the problem. We can also lower the exposure a bit and bring the whites down as well. Easy. Let's go back to the main image. A quick tip, if you double-click on the slider, it will reset the value to zero. I like to start by adding some contrast. We can also use the curve. I will push the bottom of the curve to the right to darken the shadows. If you click here, you can quickly check the before and after of the whole process. Next, I will lighten the highlights to have a bit more glow on the sky. I will also lighten the shadows, as they are a bit too dark after adding the contrast. Looking good, let's move to the color selection. Here I will play with saturation and vibrance. If you click and hold this icon, you can see the before and after of just this section. Next, I will adjust the temperature a little bit. I will make it slightly colder. Great, awesome! We can do a color grading as well. Here we can control each color separately to achieve the desirable look and feel. I will start with the greens. I will push them towards the yellow side and desaturate them. I will also make them a bit darker. Next, yellows. This time I will make them more saturated and a bit more orange. Also, I will make them a bit brighter. I will adjust other colors the same way. Awesome! We can do a color grading as well. Here we can add a certain color to the shadows, middle tones and highlights of the image. If we click here, we will have a bigger wheel. I prefer to work on one thing at a time, as these smaller wheels weren't convenient. We can also select the number and type the value manually. I will add just a little bit of blue to the shadows. I like this effect to be really subtle. I will also add a bit of orange to the highlights. Enough with the colors, let's move to the effects tab. Here we usually add a bit of texture and clarity to the photos. With renders, I like to go in another direction. 3D visualizations straight out of the software are usually unnaturally sharp. So here I will remove a bit of the texture and clarity to make the image softer. I will also add a bit of haze. It will work really well in the area where we have a glow from the sun. Awesome! The base corrections are done, but we can push the image even more using masks. With mask, you can select some parts of the image and apply the same corrections only there. I will start with a linear gradient and select the bottom part of the image. Now you can see that if we change something, it will work only on the selected area. Here we can check the before and after of all the masks. Here I will add more contrast, so the area pops out more. I will also brighten the highlights and darker the shadows to add even more contrast.
Great! If we right-click on the mask, we can duplicate it. But we have an even better option to duplicate and invert at the same time. Now I have selected only the background. This time I will try to reduce the contrast to strengthen the fog effect in the background. I will also add a bit more haze to the background. You can select any mask at the time to go back to the settings. I will do the opposite in the foreground and add a bit of clarity and texture. Great! Next, I will add a radial gradient and create a vignetting effect. We have to invert the gradient so that only the edges are selected. I will also make it less soft so the center of the image is not selected. Now, I will darken the edges. Awesome! Here also I will duplicate and invert the gradient and then make the center of the image a bit brighter. Great progress with the masks! I really like that! Lastly, I will add a linear gradient to darken up the top parts of the image to focus the attention more toward the center of the image. I will also darken the highlights to see the clouds a bit more clearly. We can also select the sky very easily. I will use this image to demonstrate it better. Click sky and that's it. We have a very accurate mask created. We can adjust the sky how we like it. If I zoom in, you can see that the mask is really good. I cannot see errors. Also, it selected reflections in the glass, so we don't have to worry about that either. We don't have to choose between Lightroom and Photoshop. We can use both, because there are some things in Lightroom we cannot do. You can quickly go to File and choose the option Edit in Photoshop. Here we can add our render elements and improve the image even more. If you want to learn all about my post-production process in Photoshop, here are some videos you might enjoy. If you want to learn all about architectural visualization in 3ds Max with the use of Corona and V-Ray, check out my online courses. Bye-bye!